Okay, guys, it's time to talk about artistic endgames. And this is something that has been in my training, my training plan for many, many years. And the reasons or the value in this kind of training is going to be here listed on the cover of this book. And by the way, this is a very good book, guys. It was sent to me by a very good friend. And I gotta tell you, I like it a lot. And again, working with artistic endgames or artistic positions has always been in my training plan. And in my own words, why is it that I like it so much? Well, I know that each one of these exercises, guys, and by the way, we're going to go over these two. Feel free to start working on them. But basically, I know that each one of them is going to require me to be accurate, precise, and I'm going to have to probably calculate 5, 10, 15 moves, finding or looking for very hard to find maneuvers or moves. And guess what? When you do this, guys, number one, you are practicing, reinforcing your ability to visualize, to calculate, but you also get into this mindset that you cannot be happy with anything, right? So you cannot give up, you cannot stop calculating until you find something concrete. And ultimately, you're going to see on the second exercise, this one in front of you, when I show you the answer, you're going to see that it is impossible to find. No one is going to find this. Sorry, Magnus, if you're watching this, I, I, I didn't mean you, okay? <laughs> no, but guys, these are just impossible to find moves for humans many times, unless you've seen it before. But that's exactly the point. When you see it for the first time in these exercises, you're going to remember the pattern. And like anything else in chess, at the end of the day, that's a new pattern for your database that you might be able to use in your own games. Now, what are artistic end games or artistic positions? Guys, this is a position that did not occur in a real game. Like this book um, is full of exercises put together by former world champion Smyslov. And what he did was he sat down and he put the pieces where he wanted them to be to make it artistic, right? So I, at the beginning, I never liked them because of that. I'm like, okay, this is never going to happen in my games. But turns out that even if the patterns, you never get them, the fact that you're calculating, visualizing 5, 10, 15 moves is going to help you a lot. So enough talk. Let me show you the answer to these exercises and you're going to see what I mean. Now, I trust that you pause the video and you work on them. So the way that I do it is I set it up on the board and I give myself five to 10 minutes, right? Now, when I finish, I'm going to look at the answer. And if I see that I, I got it wrong, I'm going to stop again and give myself another five minutes and work from the first move that I saw. And that's going to allow me to calculate. Even if I'm calculating nonsense, the fact that I'm visualizing is going to help me a lot. And guys, this is something that I've seen on my own, the improvement but also with a lot of my students. So this one, for example, if you already went over it, you should realize I have a pawn about to promote. My knight could be doing check. My knight could take on, on a7. My rook is ready to take the bishop as well. And it's very interesting that we could just take the bishop. And if the queen takes, I'm going to go ahead and promote. So this deflection is nice. But like always, we got to ask ourselves, is this forcing? And if it's not, what could they do? Well, after rook takes bishop, they could simply take the pawn and it's not clear that you're going to be winning in this position. And this is what I was telling you before. If I don't find something concrete that is going to put me in the lead, I know that's not the answer. So what other moves do I have? Well, let me look at knight d6. And by the way, guys, candidate moves, right? So my first candidate move was taking the bishop. Second, knight takes c6. And just for the sake of having a third one, I could look into a shade, another deflection, and then I get the bishop, right? So, knight d6, um, I gotta see what the black pieces could do. They could go king d8, king c7, and king b8. Now, if they go something like king c7, well, I'm going to have king e8, that's a fork, and this would be completely winning. So, you see, when I find something like this, I'm like, ha, ah, this might be it. It gives me some, some hope. <laughs> so, the other variation is when I go knight d6, what if they go king d8? Well, now I could use one of the other candidate moves and maybe throw it in here. So if the king is going to be on d8 and I decoy the queen to h8 by promotion, then I could do knight f7 and I collect the queen. And again, that's going to leave me with knight and rook versus bishop. So again, this is looking good. These two are under control. But then what if after knight d6, the king simply goes to b8? Well, I need to look for another forcing move. I have knight e8, I have promotion, but guess what? Now that the knight moved and the king is on the open file, I could go ahead and do check. Now, again, if the king goes to c7, fork. So that is going to force the king to go to a8. Guys, right there, we already calculated. 
one, two, and we're about to calculate the third move. Of course, that's besides all of the different variations that we looked into. So let's try to visualize that. I'm going to move the pieces later, but let's try to do it in our head. If you move the pieces anytime you do this kind of training, then you're defeating the purpose. So again, um, knight d6, king b8, rook b1, king a8. And by the way, the arrows also, we shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> so king a8, my king is on b1, my knight is on d6. So all I need to do is put the king in checkmate, guys. My rook is cutting off the king. I just need the knight to get to c7, and that will be checkmate. So from d6, I could go to e8, hitting the queen, and then to c7. So I'm going to do it in my head uh, and, and try to find solutions for the black pieces now. If there's nothing they could do, that's it. I won this game. But if there's something, I need to make sure that I consider it, guys. And guess what? After we calculate three, four, five, six, seven moves, it's going to get blurry but try to follow along. So again, knight d6, and by the way, try to redo it in your head as many times as you need. So knight d6, king b8, rook b1, king a8, knight e8. What could they do to move the queen out of trouble and control c7? Well, the queen could go to g3 check. And now guys, when they put me in check, I need to make sure that my king goes somewhere where they cannot put me in check again. And this is important because look, after the queen puts me in check, it is true, it's check, but after that, they need to still deal with my promotion, okay? So the queen goes away, they need to do something about this, and they need to do something about knight c7. So after queen g3, I want to go to a light square because the queen is on the dark square, the bishop is a dark square bishop, so where could that be? Going here doesn't make sense. They could continue to put me in check, so I'm going to go to a4. And interestingly enough, they cannot put me in check anymore. So now the queen is controlling c7, Who's going to control the pawn? Well, the bishop is going to go to d4. And now, if your visualization power allows you to, <laughs> to, to still see this position, guys, there's one final move here that if you find it, then the game is over. And that move is a tactical pattern that we already learned. And the move, guys, is going to be pawn to e5. Now, the pawn is getting in the way of the queen. It's getting in the way of the bishop. If, for example, they do bishop takes, well, I'm going to go ahead check, they gotta take deflection and I promote. If after I do e5, the queen takes, well, I'm going to promote. If the queen takes, then checkmate. Now, I know, blurry, you don't even know what I was talking about at some point, but guys, try to put this on a physical chessboard and work on it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do it on the board now. So we got knight d6, this move, fork, very simple. If instead they go here, now decoy, I want the queen to get to h8, and then that's going to be a fork. And then finally, if they go to b8, check. And then going back, same thing. Going here, we get 98. And now they need to take care of these two threads. So queen g3, check. I got to make sure that I go somewhere safe. And then bishop d4 to control the pawn. And then this is the move that I told you guys. Pawn to e5. And then if they take here, I think I said this before, but I think I think this should be... No, no, yeah, yeah, no. I, I was right. So knight c7. They, they got to take deflection and then we promote. If instead they had taken with the queen, well, I'm going to promote and then this diagonal is going to be safe. So I'm going to go nice c7 and that's made. Now, guys, before we go to the next exercise, this one was more about patterns that we already know, just putting them together in a very precise way. And of course, being able to pull off that uh, interference after four or five moves of calculating variations in our head. So I hope that you can see the value of these kind of exercises. Now, for the second exercise, this is going to be different in the sense that, yes, we have to calculate, we have to be accurate, but this one is, has nothing to do with patterns that we already know. So this is going to be a new pattern that after I calculated for like 10 minutes, I looked at the answer, I'm like, unbelievable but then that idea guys i kept it in my mind and that's something i'm never going to forget so you have exercises where you just gotta use what you already know there are others that you're going to learn new patterns and that's going to make you a more resourceful uh a more resourceful player so if you're like me and you pause the video and you worked on it you probably thought of pawn to g7 you thought of f6 you thought of uh probably bishop a4 all of those ideas but none of them lead to anything concrete guys and that's because the move the only thing that works here and by the way sometimes not even the engine could comprehend 
all of these uh, these exercises. Only after a while calculating, then they pick it up. But anyhow, the move here, guys, is actually bishop b1. Now, yes, you're right. These pawns are coming this way. Why would I put the bishop on b1? Well, the point is that there's no way to stop him from promotion. And what bishop b1 does is, number one, if they take me, well, I solve the problem. And then if they just promote and they get the queen, well, it looks like the game is over. They even promote with a check. But guys, the point is that after king b5, this queen is pretty much trapped in here. You could say that. And it's ultimately about removing the a2 square because now queen a2 is not even possible to control my pawn. So now let's say they do something like queen a3. I'm going to go pawn to g7. And it's funny, but this queen cannot even do any more checks. The queen cannot even stop the pawn from promotion. And you're going to see that when I promote, I'm also threatening checkmate. So this is a pattern. This is an idea that I'm never going to forget. Of course, guys, this gets way more complicated. And in case you really want to work on it, just know that the variation here to calculate is going to be bishop g3. And from here, we got to keep on going. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave it up to you. It's going to be good practice. If you want to know the answer, I'm going to leave it in the description. Or don't forget, you can always use an engine to help you comprehend the ideas, the answer to these exercises. So there you go. I hope that you find this useful. And ultimately, what I wanted you to do, well, get some practice with these exercises, but ultimately to consider making artistic positions or artistic endgames part of your training. This book, I like it a lot. If you find another one that you like, let us know in the comments. And I will see you guys on lesson number 160.